welcome to our second in a series of Crosby Group training videos on block and tackle systems. In this session, we'll discuss inspection and maintenance for the safe and effective use of block and tackle. Inspection and maintenance information is also attached to each block before it leaves the factory. If any block, for example, a snatch block, a marine block, a tubing block, or a crane block is not maintained properly, it can become a safety hazard. The first point of inspection is visual observation. If a block or any of its components or tackle, such as shackles, wire rope end connections, hooks, eyes or wire rope, etc., show signs of permanent deformation, significant wear or damage, the component should be taken out of service immediately and replaced. Let me repeat that. Never use a block or any tackle component which shows signs of permanent deformation, significant wear, or damage. The side plate of any block is an important point of inspection. If a side plate is bent or curved from its original shape, or holes in the side plate are elongated or stretched, the block should be taken out of service. There should be no play or looseness of a side plate. If a side plate is loose, this is likely a sign that the nuts and or bolts used to hold the side plate to the block have loosened or are missing. Tighten all nuts and bolts until the plate is attached firmly to the block housing. Never use nuts or bolts with stripped threads or bent shanks. For safety's sake, replace missing or damaged nuts and bolts with genuine Crosby parts to ensure proper strength and fit. Many blocks are provided with swivel load connection fittings, including hooks of various styles, shackles, or eyes. Visual inspection of swivel fittings should include shoulder running clearance, lateral movement, wear and deformation. The hook being demonstrated is a single point type. Regardless of the specific design of a hook, the maintenance rules remain the same. It's important to remember there is no substitute for regular visual inspection in the field as the first step in a good maintenance program. The shoulder running clearance between the swivel case and the shoulder is generally set at 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch at the factory. Clearance is greater than 1 8th to 3 16th of an inch or excessive lateral movement may indicate dangerous looseness or wear of the assembly. Disassembly and further inspection of the unit is required. Any fitting attached to these blocks or tackle in a block and tackle system which exhibit any deformation or wear in excess of 10% of its original dimension should be removed from service. In the inspection of hooks for deformation, the throat opening is particularly critical. Although some sources, American National Standards Institute, ANSI for example, allow for a percentage of increase in a hook's throat opening, we strongly recommend that a hook showing any deformation in this area be taken out of service. Our years of experience in the industry have convinced us that a hook showing this type of damage is an indication that not only has the hook been loaded beyond its working load limit, but likewise the entire block and tackle system has been overloaded at some time in the past. In such a case, all components of the system must be carefully inspected. Sometimes your inspection of a hook may reveal a twist. If this twist exceeds 10 degrees, the hook should be taken out of service. Hooks should be checked for nicks, gouges, and cracks. These damages can affect the integrity of the hook's load-bearing capacity. Any detected crack in a hook is reason to take the hook out of service. We recommend, as minimum, checking hooks and similar critical load-bearing parts using magnetic particle or dye penetrate inspection yearly for cracks. Trained personnel can repair nicks, gouges, and cracks by grinding in the direction in which the hook curves. Make the ground surface smooth and gradually blend into the original surface of the hook. Such grinding must not reduce the original dimension more than 10% in zone B or 5% in zone C. If the repair or wear on a hook has exceeded these limits, the hook must be removed from service. Because zone A is a low stress zone, it's not normally necessary to repair nicks or gouges in this area. Inspect your hook assemblies frequently to ensure the nut retaining pins and or set screws are in place and firmly tightened. 
Inspecting the internal parts of a block requires disassembly. The threads that connect the hook shank to the round nut can become corroded. Badly corroded or deformed threads create a safety hazard. Inspect threads for corrosion, threat root cracking, or deformation on a regular basis. Checking more frequently in work environments where more severe or faster corrosion is a possibility. If 20% or one-fifth of the threads are corroded, take the block out of service. Look for cracks and thread distortion, paying particular attention to the first three threads from the bottom and the thread relief. Any cracks detected in the entire shank or deformed threads is caused to take the block out of service immediately. We recommend as minimum a visual and a magnetic or die penetrate inspection of hook shanks and similar connection shanks annually. Hooks in our blocks generally are equipped with one of three types of bearings. First, you will find plain or steel on steel bearings. These bearings are found in hook assemblies where rotating of the hook when loaded is not required. Plain bearings allow the hook to be moved into a proper position before attaching and applying the load, but will not allow the hook to rotate once the load has been applied. The second type of hook assembly bearings are bronze washers. These allow the hook to rotate freely when it's not supporting a load and allow it to rotate under light loads as well. However, they will not allow the hook to rotate freely under heavier loads. Finally, we have thrust roller bearings. These bearings are used when it's necessary to rotate the hook and load freely. These thrust roller bearings can be of either a tapered or cylindrical design. Regardless of the type of hook bearings in use, however, they should be lubricated on a regular basis to ensure safe and efficient operation, perhaps lubricating them on the same schedule as the shivs, which we'll discuss later. Thrust bearings should be inspected while the block is disassembled for excessive wear or deformation, such as flattened rollers or uneven races. After internal inspection and before reassembling the block, always use a thread sealing compound, applying it to the threads of the hook shank and the nut. Among the sealing compounds we consider appropriate are TFE thread sealer number C648F, manufactured by Felpro, and Never Seize, manufactured by the Never Seize Corporation. To further prevent thread corrosion, we recommend the addition of a rubber gasket cap applied to the top surface of the nut hook shank. Clean the top surface of the nut hook shank, the end of the spring pin, and one side of the rubber cap with a degreasing solvent. Then apply a silicone rubber sealant to this clean side of the rubber cap, covering the entire surface with about a sixteenth inch thickness of sealant. Once the sealant has been applied, place the rubber cap on the top surface of the nut hook shank. Notice how the rubber cap is being pressed downward, causing the sealant to flow inward and outward from the rubber cap's edges. Wipe away the excess sealant. Finally, apply the silicone rubber sealant to the ends of the spring pin. Also, check to see that bearing seals, where they're used, are firmly in place and in good working condition. Most field inspection of commonly used tackle will be visual, closely looking at tackle components for signs of unusual or substantial wear or deformation. Regardless of the tackle component involved, however, always inspect all nuts, bolts, and pins used in the components assembly. Retaining nuts on all bolts and pins should be checked to ensure they haven't backed off or loosened during operation. It's important to retighten any loose nuts and pins and then lock them into place using the original locking method and device. Stakes, set screws, cotter pins, retaining rings, or cap screws. Do not try to substitute locking devices. This will affect the integrity of the locking device and could create a safety hazard. Pins held in place by retaining rings should be retained only in that manner. Do not weld them in place. Commonly used tackle should be inspected and maintained as previously outlined. We strongly recommend against attempting to repair hooks or other rigging components by welding. Never use a hook or other rigging component that shows sign of having been welded in the past, except for welds completed at the factory. Before continuing, if there's any part of this discussion which has not been clear to you, please rewind the tape and review that section again. And if questions still remain, don't hesitate to call us for further assistance 
at 800-777-1555. We want you to fully understand the proper use of our blocks and the inspection and maintenance required for using them with confidence. An internal component of blocks requiring regular inspection and maintenance are the shiv bearings. Please note, it's impossible to properly inspect the bearings for wear unless you disassemble the block. However, an external sign of possible bearing wear is provided by the shiv. If the shiv is loose or wobbles like the one you see here, this is a sign of possible bearing wear. The next step in this case would be to disassemble and fully inspect the bearings. The type of bearings used in the shivs will determine how they must be maintained and lubricated. Generally speaking, shivs are equipped with one of five types of bearings. Let's take a brief look at these five types, as well as their work applications and lubrication requirements. The first type of bearing is the self-lubricating bronze bushing. These bearings are appropriate for work environments or operations which make it difficult to get to the bearings for relubrication on a regular basis. Re-oiling self-lubricating bronze bushings will extend their life. These bearings are suited to jobs requiring low speeds and on-again, off-again, or intermittent operations. The second type of bearing is the common or plain bore shivs. These bearings are for very slow line speeds, infrequent use, and light loads, such as hand operating or manual powered hoist application. Re-oiling of plain bore shivs before each use will extend the life of the shiv bore and shafting. Common or plain bore shivs are not recommended for power crane or power hoist application. The remaining three types of bearings require regular lubrication with a lithium-based grease of medium consistency under average working condition. The plain bronze bushing, unlike the self-lubricating bronze bushing, requires frequent lubrication. These bearings are best suited for jobs involving heavier loads, slow speeds, and continuing ongoing operation. If operation is daily, these bearings should be lubricated after every eight hours of continuous operation. If operation is intermittent, they should be lubricated every 14 days. Straight roller bearings are best suited to jobs requiring medium loads and high speed operation. Frequent lubrication is required. Straight roller bearings should be lubricated every 24 hours of continuous operation or every 14 days of intermittent operation. Finally, tapered roller bearings make up the last bearing type. These bearings are designed for use with heavy loads in work environments requiring high speed continuous operation. Tapered roller bearings should be lubricated after 40 hours of continuous operation or every 30 days of intermittent operation. In general, we recommend using a lithium-based grease of medium consistency for lubrication. Knowing the type of bearings your block is equipped with is essential in setting up a proper maintenance schedule. Please keep in mind that the general maintenance guidelines we've discussed are exactly that. Good, sound, but general guidelines. Your operations maintenance schedule must be tailored to the specific job and environment in which you're operating. Your own inspection and maintenance program should comply with all appropriate regulations and guidelines such as those established by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, the American Petroleum Institute, API, and other standards organizations. If you have any questions about bearing inspection or maintenance for your particular application or job site, we'll be glad to provide further guidance or information. Call the Crosby Group, toll-free number 800-777-1555 for assistance. Let's focus on the next block part that should receive regular inspection and maintenance, shivs. Make sure the shiv groove is matched with wire rope diameter. Unmatched conditions can result in premature wear of the rope and shiv. When inspecting a shiv, look for signs of deep or unusual channeling, rutting, or corrugating along the walls and at the bottom of its groove. The size relationship of wire rope and shiv is critical to safe and efficient performance. We encourage you to review the Crosby General Catalog, Crosby Engineering Journal, 
inspection and maintenance information attached to the block from the factory or wire rope user manual in regard to wire diameter versus shiv diameter selection. The following factors, wire rope diameter, wire rope construction, shiv pitch diameter, and shiv material will affect wire rope strength efficiency, wire rope fatigue life, and shiv groove life in regard to their application. A shiv gauge is a tool to measure minimum shiv groove diameter. This measurement should be included in your regular inspection. The gauge is seated into the groove of the shiv and should fit flush with the bottommost point of the groove. In case of significant groove wear or deformation, the gauge will not seat properly in the groove, but rather will show daylight between the gauge and the bottom of the groove. As you can see, this shiv has been worn to the point where the wire rope will not seat in the base of the groove as it should. The result will be further wear on the shiv, wear on the wire rope, and eventually the creation of a safety hazard. The only solution is to take this shiv out of service immediately. Other points to inspect for are bent flanges, cracked flanges, worn hubs, cracked wells, cracked spokes, and any evidence that a shiv is loping or wobbling around its center. Even when shivs and tackle have been properly selected, there may still be a wear problem created by what we call fleet angle. In fact, we've observed over the years that fleet angle is a frequent factor causing shiv and wire rope wear. The term fleet angle refers to the angle between wire rope as it enters or leaves the shiv. Excessive fleet angle over one and a half degrees to two degrees causes friction on the wire rope and the flanges of the shiv. This will result in premature wear of the wire rope and shiv. New research has discovered that excessive fleet angle may induce twist in the rope, which could cause the fall block to rotate about itself. Excessive fleet angle can cause the wire rope to jump out of the groove of the shiv, creating a safety hazard that may result in release of the load. Before closing this presentation, remember Although your selection of proper capacity blocks and tackle components are used in the recommended load limits, frequent inspection and maintenance of the system is very important. Our primary goal at Crosby is to provide both quality products and quality information on using them safely and efficiently. For further information, please consult the Crosby Catalog, the Crosby Engineering Journal, the data sheet attached to our product, and or our safety publication, Understanding the Crosby Group Warnings. These publications are available from your Crosby distributor, or you can contact us directly at the address or telephone number shown here. We're always here to lend a hand to workers who value lives and loads. And remember, when buying Crosby, you're buying more than product. You're buying quality. For additional information or videos about the many products and services offered by the Crosby Group, you may contact Crosby Direct at 1-800-772-1500 and visit our website at www.thecrosbygroup.com for the latest updates on our products and services. Or you can email us at crosbygroup at thecrosbygroup.com.